Welcome to Figure Feedback. My name is Jeremy. And in today's video about the FlashForge 85X, I'm going to be going over the newest firmware update that was just released for this printer. I'm going to tell you what my experience was like trying to install that firmware update and some changes that I have noticed as a result of that update with the printer. And then I'm also going to share with you some things that I just kind of learned along the way as I've been using it. And then we're going to round it out with showing you some prints that I've been making with this printer as I continue to build up to the full full review. Now, just so you know, I'm not going to release the full review for this printer until it is actually on sale and people can buy it and it's actually shipping to them. All right. So until then, I'm just going to continue to make videos like this so that you can be as educated as possible about what this printer can do and all of my experience with it. All right. So let's get started. Now, first of all, the firmware update is 1.0.4 something something. And I found out about it on the FlashForge uh, users Facebook group. But the firmware update was not able to be pulled down from the air over Wi-Fi to be installed uh, from the printer. Instead, I needed to download it from the website, from FlashForge's website, and put it on a USB stick and stick it into the printer. Now, I did that. I installed it. And I want you to see the very first change that I have noticed about it. Um, actually, I want you to hear the first change as well. All right, so that was the startup sound for this printer. And maybe you're familiar with it when you first got this or even the Adventure 5M, there is a startup chirp. And usually the first thing that I would do is turn something like that off because I don't want the printer singing at me every time I turned it on. And I did the same thing for the 85X, except, after installing this update, the option to turn off the sound is no longer there. I went through the settings looking for the sound. I could have sworn it was right by the screensaver option. And that option is still there to disable or enable the screensaver. But the sound option is not there anymore, which means now I have to listen to the printer sing every time I turn it on. It's not the biggest deal in the world, but it's kind of weird how that option is not there anymore. If they've moved it somewhere else in the menus and I've just been too ignorant to find it and you have this printer, please let me know where I can find it so I can disable that sound. I would prefer if I did not have it, but I've been looking around and it's just not there. All right, so now with that out of the way, I want to tell you what my experience was like installing this firmware. And normally installing a new firmware, you just want it to be the most boring thing possible. You say, OK, you sit and you wait for a few minutes and then everything is fine. That is not my experience with this printer. It has not been my experience with this printer. So here's what happened. So once I installed the firmware update, I put the entire file on a USB stick, put it into the screen, turned on the printer, and it just handled everything automatically all by itself. And the first thing I tried to do was run a print where I can use some of the multicolor switching. I tried to do a Hue Forge print. And what I noticed is that when the print started, the purge line was just fine. But when it went to print the prime tower, the nozzle was so close to the bed, the filament was practically fused into the PEI plate. At first I thought, well, maybe it's because it's, it didn't purge completely and maybe some of the lighter color filament was mixing in with the black and maybe that's why I wasn't seeing that pure black. But after waiting for it to make the outline for the Hue Forge print, I realized this ain't normal. So I canceled the print and I had to take a wooden skewer and just chisel off the filament that was in the plate. It didn't gouge the plate. So the plate isn't damaged, but it was well in there pretty darn good. So after scraping all of that filament off, I thought, well, let me try this again. Now, just so you know, when I installed the firmware update, I did also rerun the calibrations, reran the leveling, reset the factory settings, trying to give the printer a good zero position to start from. And that still happened. So I turned the printer off and I unplugged the power cable, waited a few minutes thinking, I don't know, sometimes things like that just fix electronics, you know, power cycling and just removing all traces of electricity from it. I thought maybe that would work this time. So I went to run the print again and 
the exact same thing happened. Nice, normal, perfectly black purge line, but the prime tower way too close to the plate. And it was just giving off a very light color, really just nasty looking print. So I thought maybe this firmware is a bit borked. Maybe there was a reason why it wasn't available over the air. Maybe it was a mistake that they put it on their website. No worries, though. I thought I would just go ahead and downgrade to the original firmware. And I did. Same process. Just put the old firmware on the USB drive, stick it in the printer. Printer handles everything itself and it says successful. So we're good to go. So after I restarted the printer, after the updates had happened, the temperature reading for the bed and the hot end were reading zero degrees Celsius, which is weird because even if you're not doing anything, it still tells you what the ambient temperature is, but it was at zero. I went to run calibrations just to see if it was just a weird thing that was happening, but nothing would heat up until I got an error on the screen that said MCU not connected. So at that point, the printer was essentially useless because it would not heat anything. So I thought, well, maybe I should put the newest firmware back on there. So back upstairs, I went to get the new firmware back onto the flash drive, install it just fine. And then thankfully, when the printer came back online, it was able to heat up again properly. Ran through the calibrations, reset the factory settings, all of that good stuff. And I decided to run a print that I had already done before that was still stored on the internal storage. Even though I reset it to the factory settings, the prints that I did previously were still stored on there. And it was of this, the GameStop or the GamePro magazine keychain icon. And I printed this in another video comparing the waist of this to the Bamboo Lab A1. And this time it came out just fine. Didn't have any issue with the nozzle being way too close to the bed. It printed out just fine. And this was a three color print and good. All right. Happy with it. Things seemed like it was working out just fine. So I went back to the original Hue Forge print that I wanted to make out. And that one, thankfully, also worked out just fine this time. No scraping my plate. And this is what I printed. This is uh, just a Hue Forge print of Venom. Again, three colors, black, white, and red. And um, yeah, I think it turned out looking pretty good. So at this point, I'm like, all right, well, the printer is now behaving properly and everything is all good. Now, as far as any other changes with that firmware update that I have noticed, here is one of the changes. In the release notes, which admittedly are very vague and doesn't get very specific, it says that it sort of optimizes the pre-leveling procedure. So what exactly does that mean? Well, in this case, one thing that I noticed that the printer now does is when it goes to level the bed right before it levels, you know, it heats up first and then it starts to do the leveling procedure. So the tool head now moves to the very front of the plate at the temperature that is set at for the print. And it will just kind of gently scrape this area of the plate. And then it'll park itself there as the nozzle cools down to about 125 degrees Celsius. And then it starts probing the bed to do the leveling. Now, when it does that, it leaves behind some filament residue, the very bottom, right before the handle. I personally don't like that because I have to scrape it off with my fingernail and it didn't used to do that before. And I'm no engineer, but I don't know why the printer or the print head does that before every print now. It sort of reminds me of how it does it on the uh, on the 5M where it goes to the back corner of the build plate and it makes kind of like that T shape when it's uh, right before it levels. So I'm guessing that is something similar to that, except they chose to go to the very front of the plate to do that. Um, and again, I don't know why it does that, but it does. And I guess that's the optimized procedure before leveling. Um, I, I just personally don't like to have that filament scrape on my plate like that, especially since it seemed like it was working just fine without having to do that procedure. But you know, what do I know? I'm just a guy on YouTube. So anyway, the leveling process is still the same. And the other thing that I noticed is when the printer goes to purge the filament, 
it wipes the nozzle on the nozzle wiper much faster than before. Previously, it would be a sort of a nice kind of a wipe, but now it does it really fast. It goes, you know, and I'll probably show you in some B-roll uh, what it looks like. So um, it wipes quite fast on the nozzle now, but it doesn't always do that. Sometimes when it wipes the nozzle, it does go a bit slower. I don't know what prompts it to go fast or to go slow, but that is something that it does. And um, that seems to be the only change that I've been able to just see with my eyes um, and for the sound with my ears that the printer now does as a result of that firmware update. I'm not sure of any behind the scenes kind of stuff. I don't know if there's anything going on with logs or if you dig in deep into some settings that you're not supposed to see. Maybe there's some changes there. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But uh, so far, um, since I got it up and running and everything is working properly now, those are the only changes that I've noticed. And the prints that I've done since then have came out okay. So I'm guessing that the printer is doing just fine. All right, so with now that out of the way, let's take a look at just some basic prints that I have been doing uh, lately. Uh, so I've been doing some TPU testing. And um, if you check out my previous video about this printer where I'm talking about, uh, it's basically like a vlog style video and I'm covering uh, some different points. I show off some TPU prints that I have done, including the longest TPU print that I have done to date of this Captain America helmet, in case you didn't see that video. So this is all TPU, 95A TPU, took 90, well, it took 95 hours, took 19 hours to print this thing. Not big enough for an adult because the print bed is too small, but it did turn out pretty good. And I printed this outside of a filament dry box, and this A is made out of PLA that I just glued on to it. Um, so the only um, thing that I would say about this print that's a uh, negative is that uh, I still need to tweak the support settings for TPU because it was holding on pretty good. So I was able to rip it off, but you know, it leaves a little bit of residue behind. Perhaps in a future video, I can see what would happen if I use some maybe PLA interfaces for a TPU print that's kind of like this, so that those supports can break away easier and not leave so many um, rough edges, so to speak. But all in all, you know, still came out looking pretty decent. Um, and I printed another one of these dummy 13s. And I think this one was at 150% scale. The skeleton of this model was printed on the 85X in Bamboo Lab High Flow PETG in this red. And um, it just came on the... Um, on like the kit card, came out just fine, printed uh, perfectly the very first time. And then for the armor pieces, I split between a couple of them I had to print on here because um, I had a tangle and a spool, but most of them printed on the original 5M. And so we, they were just sort of just sharing back and forth. But this came out just great. This is a very popular model. You'll see it all over the place. People make it out of different materials at different scales. They'll make it life size, but uh, yeah. This dummy 13 came out good and I wanted to um, also, oh yeah, I forgot the TPU duck made out of clear TPU from the, um, from directly from the filament dry box came out looking absolutely marvelous. It's absolutely no infill, 0% infill, infill on this duck and it is uh, very squishy and it looks really, really good. So yeah, just another example of this 95A TPU working just fine on this printer going through the uh, IFS. And then as far as um, trying to see what the tolerances were like, um, I thought that I would do something more figure-like. So I found this model on, um, it was either Principles or Maker World, but it is a little robot thing and it has all of these little joints and it's supposed to test the tolerances to see, you know, if you can have movable parts that are printed all in one piece on your printer or whether you need to start tweaking some stuff. This particular model comes in three different variations, each one more difficult than the last. This one was on the medium difficulty setting. And there's one that's a step above that's harder. And there's one that's a step below that is easier. So basically the whole thing is to see if you can have all the joints move. So this little figure has like double jointed knees and you can 
move the head and you can move the arms and then the torso swivels. This was printed in PETG and uh, everything moves. Everything moves, except I think one small part. There was some little part on here. Oh, yeah. So kind of like over here for his like knee joint. It's like a little circle that fills everything in. A little part of that broke off as I was like loosening it up. But the leg itself is still there and all the pieces, you know, still move. So if you're wondering about tolerance tests, um, it passed this tolerance test with a movable uh, little action figure. So that worked out absolutely great on this printer using the Inslogic PETG Pro, which is some really good filament. I am almost out. I definitely need to get some more of that. And uh, one more thing that I want to show you. Well, I lied, not one more thing, three more things that I want to show you. Uh, kind of going back to the P for, to the uh, TPU, I scaled down this tribal Mandalorian helmet just so I can uh, you know show it to you and how the intricate patterns of this helmet turned out looking really, really good. But as I said earlier, um, the supports definitely need tweaking. I did not tweak these supports at all. I thought that maybe it would just be easy to do. I printed this before the Captain America helmet and these supports are just on here. Whoa way too good so i'm just going to leave it like this so while the supports are um on there really good to the point where i don't want to remove them uh, but i think the main star is just seeing these intricate patterns all around this all around this helmet printed in tpu and it looks really really nice very clean and uh, i think i printed this from the filament dry box as well i think maybe maybe not but either way it still came out looking really good i like this and then another thing that's i guess kind of more functional if you're thinking about tpu i found this um this on maker world it's uh it's something that you use to like stabilize your your wrist i guess if it's sprained or something i forgot what the proper terminology is for it and i just printed this as it as it was as it came i didn't scale it up so it doesn't fit me but basically the way that, that works you kind of like put your thumb through it and then you can you know wrap this around your arm and then it also came with some uh, with some straps that you can also print from TPU to go around these corners so that you can basically cinch it closed. So I think this is something that, you know, would probably fit one of my kids. But if I made it larger, maybe I would have been able to scale it to fit me. But this is just an example of something that's functional and could be useful when printing out of TPU. And then I also did it in a couple of colors, just with this blue TPU here. And then here was just some white. Um, I was hoping that the white would come out a little bit more contrasty but it didn't i guess it's just a little bit too transparent for that but uh it came out good though these little hexagon shapes they came out nice and clean none of them are broken and i think this is something that could actually be useful to someone you know kind of stabilize your wrist and then last but not least, just a little cosplay type stuff. Here is this bone blade from Monster Hunter Wilds that I printed. It came in different parts. I didn't try to like paint it or do anything with it. I just kind of stuck it all together. And I thought that this was just pretty fun. Something like this when it's broken up and it's not too big, you can print the whole thing on a printer like this. You know, you're just going to take you um, a little bit longer since you have to put less things on the plate, but you can totally do it. So if you're into Monster Hunter, you can totally print some cosplay stuff and this came out pretty good so i've had some really good experiences printing on this printer as far as the success rate goes i have not had a single print come off of this pei build plate not one i don't know if this is a different kind of pei build plate but the prints stick to it really really well i have had nothing come off i've cleaned it once and i don't even think i had to i just felt bad because i did so many so many prints on it probably printed 150 hours on the plate without ever cleaning it and i was like well you know i think that it's time for me to clean it but you know it's it's been humming along just fine it's just sometimes the software can be a little bit weird but but hopefully through continuously tweaking and updating and stuff like that and maybe through subsequent production runs of printers that are you know better built or whatever basically the ones that you guys are going to be able to buy hopefully it'll be better than uh than the one that i have from the first wave and you know the improvements can go all around but we won't know until we know
All right. So that is going to do it for this video. And uh, yeah, I just want to keep you guys updated on what's going on with this printer and covering it. And like I said, um, you can expect a full review for it once it's actually available for you to buy and it's shipping when you buy it. So if you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. And if you want to watch more videos about the FlashForge 85X, check uh, the link in the description. It's going to take you to the 85X playlist, which has about 10 or 11 videos and is growing. All right. So that's all for now. Until next time, take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon.